two to one uneasy favourite. City of Kings eleven to four, nine to two, and bigger the rest. They're off and racing. The season opener then, the Bet365 British EBF condition stakes race here at Newmarket underway. Autard Prince has just been taken in behind rivals, where City of King shows up towards the far side. Little group of four have just broken away from the others, but in essence not much between these two small groups. Holguin showing good speed up the near side with Mukid in behind them, a little bit keen perhaps. Godolphin's white cap, Majestic Pride not far away being tracked by High Royal runner with the nose band on the stand side of the group. Think Climates together with Mukid over towards the far side. Tenjin's getting some cover, so too Power Dress and Autard Prince, the back marker. Racing then towards the three pole and City of Kings and Holguin not separated by very much at all with Think Climate over to the far side. Mukid still travels up fine. Majestic Pride in fifth, bustled along. High Royal asks for the effort down the near side as well. Then comes Tenjin, Power Dress plugging on quite nicely, rather better than that actually, getting involved. And at the back, Autard Prince. Uh, Think Climate's dropped away. Holguin is the leader now. Holguin from Mukid, but now hitting top gear is Majestic Pride. Power Dress has run a fine race, and then High Royal down the stand side. Slowly but surely, Majestic Pride is working his way to the lead. Holguin is going to keep him honest all the way to the line. Majestic Pride and Holguin. Majestic Pride just too strong for Holguin. Power Dress, she ran a super race in third. High Royal next and then Mukid. Majestic Pride wins 2-1 favourite William Buick Charlie up in the Godolphin Blue. Holguin was second 6-1, Power Dress was third at 16-1. Just a neck the winning distance. Majestic Pride, what is typically a good meeting for, for Charlie Appleby and William Buick in winning form. Uh, the race just developed to middle to near side. That is exactly where this horse who was tracking the pace was produced. He uh, ran around just a, a touch as the he started to come under a little bit of pressure, but then he hit the rising ground really nicely and saw it at, at the dip well. Just being closed down a touch again towards the line, perhaps idling a little bit, but that's a, a good start to this campaign for Majestic Pride. Bigger and better things await. Congratulations, he did that well in the end. No, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I was great to get off to a nice start here in Newmarket. Um, he's a horse that's, we knew fitness wasn't a problem because he's been sort of on the runners list for the last three weeks. So and we just kept sort of bypassing races thinking, oh, we'll wait, we'll wait. And then we felt that we'd just wait for the turf. And uh, coming into today with the conditions the way they are out there, I felt that, that he would handle those probably better than some of the others in the field there just because of the, the strength on the dam side there. You know, Gombarda, she was a, a great mare that uh, brings a lot of, uh, a lot of her progeny appreciate cutting the ground. And did William say it was quite blustery out there? Because it feels on this side of the stand, and I bet it's worse out, out there. Yeah, so he got a bit of cover, to be fair. So, uh, But you can definitely, I haven't had a chance to speak to James afterwards, but you know, I'd say he was getting blown around a bit up on the front end there. Uh, it's a shame we galloped this morning. It was beautiful conditions, but yeah, there's some, there's some pretty strong gusts out there. What's the plan with the winner then, Majestic Pride? Look, uh, I'd say we step him up in trip, go up to the mile. Um, yeah, maybe something like the Heron might be a race to look forward to. He's a horse I feel we'll probably tiptoe our way through the ranks, hopefully. I, I know he's in the guineas. You know, obviously people will ask now, will he be a Guinness horse? No. <laughs> Unless it was bottomless ground out there. And I say just conditions, I know that he'd be one of the horses that would be suited to. Uh, if it's highly unlikely it will be like that, I'll probably yeah, miss the guineas and we'll quietly come through the ranks. OK. Um, but you have got several potential Guinness horses. Noble Style would be one. How is he, the Jim Crack winner of last year? Yeah, he's in great form, done very well for the winter. Uh, you know, we've got him in on Saturday at Newbury, but it looks as though, unfortunately, the ground's going to go against us there. Anyway, it's already against us as it stands, and if we have any further rain, it'll probably, yeah, uh, be the decision we made probably not to go there, and therefore I'll bring him here for a race course gallop, uh, which is, you know, a little bit frustrating because he's a horse that, you know, as we saw, winning a, a gym crack, he's got a lot of speed in the family. Um, he hit the line strong and it took a bit of pulling up after Jim Crack, but that doesn't automatically say he's going to stay a mile. So I was, I was hoping to go to, uh, to the green and just to step him up to the seven and just get a little bit more confidence behind it. But, uh, you know, if it doesn't happen, there's only one guineas over here. And so therefore, you know, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll gallop here this week and then we'll uh, head straight to the guineas. Okay. And how about the others? You've got uh, Naval Power. Yeah, you've got Naval Power and Mysterious Knight, both in the Craven. Mm -hmm. So, need to say, that'll be a great pointer for us. Uh, Naval Power, as we saw there, had a nice profile. You know, got beat in the Dewhurst. Put a line through that. We took him out to Dubai. He, um, 
he won a you know listed race out there quite comfortably. Um, he's a horse that I feel he's probably going to be better when he starts stepping up in trip as well. But he's in the he's in the Craven and, and fit and well. Um, and then Mysterious Knight, his horse that uh, last seen winning at the Grade One in Canada, uh, quite impressively. Um, he's done very well. I, I am. I do think he's a lovely horse. The reason we're, he's sort of craven bound is to sort of test him on the track. I'm just not 100% sure whether the, he, the track will suit him. He's got a he's got a great stride on him. I'm not saying it won't suit him, but until you know this, it's one of the first excuses we use when they get beat is the is the dip. So we thought we're, we're trying to take that out of the equation before we get to the guineas. And how about Silver Knot? Silver Knot's in great form. Uh, he's a horse that obviously we've seen have a nice profile for his two-year-old career, finishing up, finishing you know second, just beaten in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But he's going to go up here this week, and then we we'll go straight to the guineas with him. I felt. He won't look out of place in the lineup without. He doesn't need to prove himself. He's a past winner on this track in the Autumn Stakes, and like I say, he showed a level there uh, in the Autumn Stakes and therefore in the Breeders' Cup that uh, he, he deserves to be in the lineup. You mentioned you were galloping this morning. That was Hurricane Lane. Yep, gallop Hurricane Lane this morning. I had him in at France the weekend, but it was just a little bit twitchy. We were away as well, and the ground was particularly heavy down there. And I, I, I gave it a swerve, and we came here, and we just said we'd, you know, see how we gallop this morning to decipher whether we would make our way to the John Porter on Saturday. Uh, we're delighted. William sat on him; he, he looked great, and so therefore, uh, all being well, we'll head to the John Porter on Saturday. Excellent. Now, I realise this has been a bit like 20 questions, but you're with us today. New Kingdom in our next race over the course and distance you've seen. Yes, yeah, um, dropping back to the seven will we'll, we'll suit him. Um, Unfortunately, he's a bit of a, you know, a front-running horse, which is, like I say, conditions are probably not going to play into our hands. Uh, and, and he's, you know, he's carrying that weight for a reason. He's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's going to be competitive. But Lydia, I do think it's going to be tough out there with the with the conditions the way they are. Revel territory.